Hi guys! It's Mitsu! Yay! I'm doing my first video ever in terms of actually doing commentary while having a playthrough, which is probably why you won't hear any music for the next little while, but that's okay, because you get to hear me talk about absolutely nothing of importance or significance. Well, they tell me that something amazing has happened in the Borderlands 2 universe, in the Borderlands universe as a whole, over the past couple of days and weeks, and that something that has happened is the magic of a new game. A game we've been waiting for for a very long time. Uh, the problem with the game is it's not a sequel, which allowed Randy to lie to us all and then laugh in our faces when he did it. The nice part, however, seems to be that it is a game that maybe we will all enjoy a lot, and it's Borderlands The Pre-Sequel. It's going to take place in between Borderlands 1 and 2, and that's going to be phenomenal, at least in my opinion, because there's a lot that they could do in the interim of the however long it has been between Borderlands 1 and 2. I believe it's about a year, if I recall correctly. It could be a little bit less. I'm sure you guys will comment and yell at me about how stupid I am. How could you get it wrong? You don't even know your days about Borderlands! What are you doing in this community? You're literally worse than Hitler. Probably. So, there's a nice amount of new things that we're going to get to learn. And the first thing that we all learned was we're going to the moon! We are going to the moon! Do you know how excited I am that we are going to the moon? It basically negates everything that's been going on and all the, 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 the hatred and the vitriol that a lot of us have thrown at Gearbox's way lately about the fact that they didn't release that as a DLC! And it's something that we wanted, but they would be like, Nah, instead we're going to do this thing. We're going to give you Son of Cromorax. Which, by the way, I am hyped for Son of Cromorax. But at the same time, I would have preferred something a little bit different. But they've decided to take the entire concept, run with it, and turn it into an entire game. So really, should I be bitching all that much? I guess the answer is no. There are going to be four classes in this new game. Athena, who's going to be the gladiator who's going to tank. Wilhelm, who I'm just going to call the Wilhelm, because he's Wilhelm. Uh, Nisha, who you might know as the sheriff of... Well, not the sheriff of, but I, I guess the sheriff of, of Lynchwood. Eh, eh, I think she's the sheriff of Lynchwood. We'll just call her that. I like that title. And Claptrap, who is also affectionately going to be known in this game as Fragtrap. Apparently, it's the one in Borderlands 2, so I've read in some promotional material. I don't know what happened that he lost all of his shit, but I would like to know in the interim how that happened. I have a lot of questions. Some of them include some that may have been answered already, and the first one, and the most famous one, is how the hell is Fragtrap going to get up and down stairs if stairs is his only weakness? A lot of you have written me since I pointed this out on Twitter and said, well... Jetpack. And if Jetpack is a limited resource, that doesn't seem like a really efficient way of going about doing it. And maybe he'll have cool other ways, like maybe he'll be able to just jump up the stairs the whole time. But that'll be nice. And speaking of jumping, double jumping, I guess, would be in, a, in the game, because you're able to use a Jetpack, which is going to be a really cool mechanic. And the Jetpack runs on the O2 system. More on that in a little while. Claptrap's point of view is going to be quite amusing, because he's going to be low to the ground. And for those of you who have played Goldeneye back in the day, those of you old fogies like me, you are familiar with Oddjob's point of view being a lot lower, because he's a much shorter character. And a lot of you scumbags out there, I'm sure, are giggling right now. Ha ha ha! I picked him because I'm the best in the world! No, no, you're awful, and I hate you, and everybody else hates you, and all of your friends hate you, and that's why you don't have friends now, because you fucking picked Odd Job, you piece of shit motherfucker. Now, another cool mechanic that has been introduced is the fact that Athena basically turns into Captain America. I don't know if you guys know this about me or not, but the first hero that I liked wasn't Batman, even though I love Batman the most now. It was actually Captain America. When I was a kid, I actually had a bunch of Marvel videos of cartoons. I used to watch Captain America, so I'm a big fan of Cap. And Athena gets to not only throw her shield around, Captain America style, but she can actually use her shield to absorb incoming damage, much like in Titanfall with the Vortex shield, 
and then reflect it back on the other people. How cool is that going to be? Another cool feature is that they're no longer psychos. There are no psychos anymore. The psychos have been replaced by lunatics. Luna. Lunatics. Do you get it? Do you get the joke that they're trying to make? It's because they're on the moon. Luna. Lunar. Ah, eh, whatever. The oxygen kit, which I brought up a little bit earlier, is going to affectionately be known as the Oz kit. Which amused me to a certain degree, because the Oz kit, for those of you who know anything about Australia, the game is being made by 2K Australia, and Oz is a uh, kind of an affectionate way to refer to Australia. And I think that may have been coincidental, but if not, that's a really cool and sneaky way to go about handling everything. I appreciated it greatly. Whether or not it's intentional, anyone's guess at this point. Dead bodies are going to be able to float around after they die. So when you kill somebody, it's not just going to ragdoll and fall to the floor and that'll be the end of your journey. No, that body flies, motherfucker. He goes all over the place. And that low grav aspect is going to be really interesting because I want to see some videos where people just blast somebody from one end of a map to another one. In fact, maybe I'll go ahead and make one of those videos. Who knows? Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm not good enough at games to do something like that. But, why would I blast somebody from place to place when I could freeze them? Cryo-weaponry is in the game. The way it's supposedly going to work is cryo-weaponry is going to, upon rapid fire, slow you down, slow you down, slow you down, slow you down, until eventually... It stops you in your tracks. And then, much like Terminator 2, you can shoot somebody and they explode into a million bajillion pieces. Only unlike Terminator 2, when they explode into a million bajillion pieces, blood goes everywhere, bringing back that glorious score from Borderlands 1 that we've missed so much. Thank Christ. And hopefully I'm able to do this with laser weaponry. We finally get actual lasers, and not this E-Tech bullshit we've been dealing with for all of Borderlands 2 now. You know how happy I've been now that I know the actual pew-pew lasers are going to be in? My question is, what is their special effect going to be? I haven't been able to find any material in the news articles that I've seen so far. But I'm hoping that they have cool effects like maybe shooting off a limb, or putting an actual hole that you can see through in somebody. Those would be really cool effects for ways to handle that kind of deal. Uh, there is a rumor circulating right now that there are possible rewards and special items that you can get in-game for having a previous save file or previous achievements completed in other Borderlands files. Much like if you had Borderlands 1 on your Steam file, you could then turn around and get special skins and heads in Borderlands 2. <clears throat> Much like you guys know me for my siren, the beloved Patricia Tannis head for Maya. There has also been a, uh, a reveal of something called the Stingray, which is a hover bike, more or less. And I'm not a fan of motorcycles, but a hover bike always seems like a cool concept. And on top of that, there's talk, rumored, not necessarily confirmed, but there's talk that there will be a gyrocopter in the game. Which would be the first time we can actually fly in Borderlands. And wouldn't that be nice? Given the fact that the gravity is already low, I could totally see them making that happen. And it makes me really excited too, because I'm going to pull off some pilot wing style shit. Which, I loves me my pilot wings. Especially pilot wing 64, when the gyrocopter can shoot missiles. So you'd shoot the missile at Mount Rushmore, and then to turn into Mario's face. Those are some good times. <clears throat> and finally, I can confirm that for the foreseeable future, Gearbox is unwilling to take any risks right now in terms of converting Borderlands 1.5, or Borderlands the pre-sequel as it is known, 
into a next generation game. So the game so far will only be on PC, because it's the Master Race, on 360, and on PlayStation 3. So if you were thinking about getting a next gen system, for now, hold the phone. You may not need to if this is your go-to game. Just as an affectionate aside, I'd like to congratulate a friend of mine at the end of this video, uh, Mechjaw, who was raided today by myself, Morning After Kill, uh, Admiral Baru, and towards the end, even Gathalian came on to say hi, as well with Zuli. You can find him at links provided below, as well as all of them, I'm sure. Uh, congratulations to him. And it was a defining moment, I think, for the Borderlands com 2 community. The Borderlands community as a whole did a really good thing today, and I hope that we do it for a lot more of these smaller streamers, as there are a lot of good streamers out there, and a lot of good YouTubers who deserve a lot more exposure than they're getting. So keep it up, guys. You are fantastic. And a quick shout-out as well to Gathalian, as he got over 1,100 viewers on his Twitch, because he essentially hid in a corner and scared the ever-loving crap out of his wife. So thank you guys so much for this glorious recap of Borderlands the pre-sequel. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow my stream at the links provided below, of course. And you can also subscribe to me here on YouTube and on Twitter, or Twitch rather, that would be nice. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. And uh, I will provide links, of course, for all the people mentioned in the video. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next time. Because it was Mitsu's time to shine! Yay!